right, folks, it's time to prepare for a World Series. The Red Sox are heading to their fourth World Series since 2004. I'm very excited about it. On today's show here on Face to Facts, we're going to preview the series a little bit, give you our thoughts and opinions, and hopefully we'll be able to break down some good things about to happen for this 2018 Boston Red Sox. Joining to me to my left, Tom Smith. Welcome, Tom. Phil Healy in the Phil Healy chair, center square. <laughs> and then you have me, your host, in the Nick chair. I am your host, Nick Faced. Um, very excited here about this World Series. I want to recap first the Astros series. On our previous show, we talked about what our expectations were before I believe that was going to be game five. Did we do the show? No, I think no it was, it was be game before three. game four. Be game three. So we didn't three. see game four oh, or yeah. five. No, did we? No, we didn't say. No, it was before no, game right. four. You're the right. Red yeah, Sox were up two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we did not see game four right. or five. So we're going to break it down from that point on. The Red Sox had just won game three against the Astros, which was at Minute Maid Park at their stadium. Mm -hmm. um, that was a game that. Uh, they look really good. That was the Nathan Evaldi start. Yeah, Evaldi looked right. really good on that they start. They went like four to one, right? I believe it was a four. Oh to no, that was the, that wasn't the four to one. No, that, that was, was the Jackie Bradley like Jr. Eight Grand one, Slam. That was like yeah, the, was uh, the uh, eight to one, eight to something eight game. To eight, eight, to yeah. eight to two. Eight to two is what yeah. it was. Kimbrough led up a run. <laughs> game four, you had Rick Porcillo pitch, and it was a very controversial game, pretty much from the first inning on. Mm -hmm. It didn't finish till 1.30 in the morning, so everybody going around on Thursday was very tired. I forgot about the <laughs> We were all zombies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, By that time, I forgot about everything. <laughs> the game started in that yeah. first inning with Jose Altuve hitting the ball. That was very deep to right field. Mm. Mookie Betts back makes the, you know what? Makes the leap. <laughs> makes, makes the, the leap, leap <laughs> into the stands, and uh, country, country boy Joe West, the umpire, calls uh, fan interference on the play. I was amazed getting the call um, correct. Shocked. At least on my eyes, was the call correct? I, I mean, from my from my viewpoint of the replay, it, it looked like he would have had the ball in his glove if not for a fan closing his glove too early. Looked like it to me. Did you get a chance to check it out? Yeah, yeah. I think okay. there was interference e niche too. But it but wasn't. I think a double would have been. I think that the only quibble I might have is like I would have if he would have said, "Oh, that's a double," and like keep it in play. When I yeah. was watching the game. It looked like Mookie was going to make the play, yeah. which I agreed with there. But I was shocked that they called him out. Yeah. That's what I was most surprised on. I didn't realize that they were going to be able to do that. That call right there changed the whole heartbeat of the game. Um, then, you have another, then you have more plays that were throughout that game. You had Tony, um, what's his name? Kemp. Tony Kemp, left fielder for um, Houston. He ends up trying to stretch a ball that was hit oh, down yeah. the right field side. Of course, we know how testing great Mookie, Mookie's testing arm. Mookie's arm. I mean, how Kimbrell looked terrible when he started that inning. That was his first batter. Yeah. That was the first batter that he got, and it was a one pitch, first pitch right down the line, and Mookie just nailed him, getting him out at second base. It was perfect, perfect execution. Yeah. yeah. It was, like an, it was like a no-look right. no throw and yeah, not he, a single bounce on the ground. Oh, it's great. He and, uh, Give credit to Bogart, too, for the receiving Great tag. tag. Great yeah. tag. He, he stretched perfectly, plucked him right in the head, he which tagged. I love. He got yeah, him, nice yeah. right in the head. He had his uh, you know, uh, leg, he had his foot right in front of the bag, Yep. and was ready to go. Do you agree Taking with a, that? Uh, yes, I did agree with it. With him going to uh, Oh, no, second? I did not agree with that. No, 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 no. But even, I kind of did. Even if I did or didn't. Didn't. You're trailing by X amount. You already have so much speed. Why are you yeah. going to test one of the best arms out there in right field? It was field? one yeah. of those. It was one of those balls where it was like, is it deep enough or is yeah. it not? It was like. I a, mean, the pivot that Mookie Betts made in right field to get the ball. I mean, it was going to take an athletic play. Didn't Correa or Gonzalez do it like the next, like within that inning, the next guy, like he stretched it the yeah, same they, way. Yeah. Yes, he did. And he made it. Yeah. And he that did. guy, like Kemp, right? I, I think mean, it was Correa. Yeah, Correa. Yeah. Because it had to like. Kemp ran it pretty well, and it had to be a perfect throw, and it was. If he was just off a little bit. It was the most perfect yeah. throw you yeah. could ever get from an outfield yeah, to second base. Yeah, it really, it was, I mean, it was nuts. It was like two, it was like two balls he plays that just kind of. The Red Sox you know, had a lot of luck on their side in that game four, I must say, because yeah. Porcillo did not look very good. Mm -hmm. 
When Rick Porcello ball, yeah. pitches, at least the good thing is if you know that he's shaky to start, that's the Porcello you're going to get. If you see him throwing well, you usually can see the signs, at least in the first two innings, about what you're going to get. Um, I think they pushed it a little bit too much on him, but it, the bullpen was already taxed. So they knew that they had to get something out of him. And so five innings was a decent job. The next person up in that bullpen, I believe that game was Joe Kelly. Mm -hmm. And Kelly let up the, another run. I think it made it like 5-4 at some point. Um, and then, of course, you have Jackie Bradley for the second night in a row coming up and getting the, getting the game, I believe it was now 6-5 to five mm -hmm. at that point. Um, and then the Red Sox added on a couple more for insurance runs. But then the most questionable call of the game, in my eyes, was when the eighth inning hit and you saw Matt Barnes throw one batter. And then uh, I believe, no, it wasn't, seventh inning. Barnes only pitched to one batter. Mm -hmm. Then Kimbrell came out for the eighth. And after what we saw so far in the postseason from the previous appearances, I, I was very concerned, to say the least, mm -hmm. that they were trying to go for Kimbrell for two innings, mm -hmm. something that he had never done in his career. He had never got a save opportunity out of it from two innings or more. We knew what the evidence was that suggested that Kimbrell was probably not the best option to use there. So many fans like myself were second-guessing Alex Cora on that. Moral of the story, I don't think we should ever second-guess Alex Cora anymore mm -mm. <laughs> because he makes... The ballsy call, the gutsy call, and gets it done. Was Kimbrell really rolling the dice? Was he like inches away from a game being a disaster and uh, losing? The ninth inning was. Sure yeah. was, because the ninth <laughs> yeah. inning, you end up still have, I think you were winning by, was it still two runs at the time? I think it was three. I, I think it was And he loaded up the bases. Then he loaded the up the bases. <clears throat> I and then he, he, he got the somebody. luckiest thing. He got the oh. luckiest play ever. Yeah. And no, then Ben Intendi yeah. makes one of the greatest catches in Red Sox history. Yeah. It's a bold statement from me saying it, but you have to give it to it. I don't know any other catches that have been in the playoffs in Red Sox history that stand out as much as that in winning a game. No. I, I, I can't remember any. <laughs> no, I don't know like any defensive play more. I mean, the only maybe. You know, Pokey Reese to uh, That easy chopper. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Ground ball stabbed by Reese or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, which I'm glad it was him, yeah. Uh, one of my favorite calls ever. Yeah. But no, I don't think any, yeah, try to think of any just a I defensive can't. play. It was even crazier. It, it, I mean, picking off someone in I know the World Coco Series. Crisp in 2007 was it? Yeah. made a crashing play against the Indians. I think so. I think, but the score was like eight to three, I think, and the oh. Red Sox easily had won it. But it yeah. was still, it took a good effort. I, I just don't see another catch that, like the Ben Intendi yeah, one. When it. you think of playoffs in the Red Sox, you think of David Ortiz, yeah. Manny Ramirez, and Dave Roberts. Yeah, it, with the, the modern era. Yeah. You got to put Julio Bill Lugo. Miller in there, too. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to put him in there. But there yeah. is, I know everyone will hate me, there is a great. Um, play in the World Series, I think. I think it was 2007 with Julio Lugo. Has like just had the great stab at like a line drive that would have been over his head. But he played the best I ever saw him in that World Series. Julio Lugo's biggest moment in his career was hitting a two-run home run off Pedro in the alumni game. Oh! <laughs> that's, his, that's his claim to fame. There we go. There you go. Hey, he uh, earned it. He earned it that uh, four games against Colorado. Amazing that you did win that World Series in 07 with Lugo at short and yeah. J.D. Drew in right field. Yeah, then they might have won it again. It, well, what, it's in 08, the year after. yes. Yeah. In 08, that's right. But they had um, a couple people were hurt, I believe, that mm -hmm. year. I think, I think Pedroia so. was out. But they still, no, he was in. He was they in. Still, Somebody was hurt during that. There was a, oh no, Manny wasn't on the team. Manny was not. He Jason was Bay go. was there. Jason Bay. Yeah. Um, a trade from uh, the Mets, I think. Or, no, the Pirates. Pirates, Pirates at the time, yes. He went to the Mets after. Uh, but, yeah, no, they had him, and, yeah, I remember he was actually pretty good. He helped them with the... I think there were a couple of pitchers Oakland. that were hurt that year, too. It might have been. Yeah. I know Lester was there, but I think some other guys were hurt. But yeah. Schilling, was Schilling still a part of 08? Uh, I don't uh, think so. No. Oh, he might have been on the team. I yes, heard... he was on the team, and he was hurt. Yeah. He was hurt. But 7 was his last hurrah, I think. Yes, it was. Yeah. Um, well, we Another digress, thing that yeah. I got to say, too, uh, on the whole series here is with that catch with Benintendi, 
Would people, I want to take a step back again with this catch. You know, no pun intended on it. If Ben yeah. Intendi did take a couple steps back on that ball, it wouldn't have been caught. Mm -hmm. He took a couple steps in to set himself up to make that catch. What would fans have been talking about more the next day? The outrage of Kimbrell or the outrage of Ben Intendi trying to dive for the ball and not coming up with it and maybe the Astros taking a 2-2 series tie? Kimbrell. You think it would have been Kimbrell? Absolutely, okay. Kimbrell. I mean, I think it less... if it wasn't if it wasn't for Kimbrel, Benintendi wouldn't have had to put as much effort into making that catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. The onus is on Kimbrel for getting but, those men on base. Would Cora have gotten some blame from that too? Uh, for leaving Kimbrel in, and probably. Yeah. It's, it's almost yeah. like a Grady Little scenario with Pedro. Yeah. Okay. Which I didn't disagree with at the time. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, and that's that's what explains me a lot. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I hate playing that what if game. I don't like to do it, but it was that close. Sure. I remember 1.30 in the morning going absolutely nuts <laughs> that Thursday morning. It actually really wasn't Wednesday morning. It was, it was really Thursday morning yeah, yeah. When, when, the, when the play happened. I, I couldn't sleep. I was so amped and so wired because what, a, what an important win you just got there. 2-2 two, two versus 3-1. Well, the difference, man. That's a huge difference. That gave me even more of a chance of being right on because the call. Because if, yeah. <laughs> if you watched our last episode... Tom was sitting in that seat as well, and he predicted that it was going to take five games. Yeah. You and I said, let's be conservative. Yeah. Well, let's gotta, go to save Gotta give, got give Phil half credit here. Yeah, he I did kinda, say, oh, I, I would go with Tom, but... I if you also back <laughs> up what I said, too, I go, Tom, I don't disagree with you, yeah, yeah. and if I was a betting man, that's what I would choose, but I'm not. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the exact words I used. Yeah. No, I but I chose six in head. because... I still no, really. felt that the Astros were a great baseball team. Well, they are. They're the Red Sox taking five from them? Yeah. Specifically three games at their park on the road? That's, that's just absurd to me. Yeah. It shows you how good this team is. Well, my biggest question mark for that series was in either game four or five when uh, Hinch put in Osuna. When it was like that was close. game three. Yeah, that three. was game three when Bradley hit the Wasn't home run. Because like yeah, it was seventh, six to four out with the time. Was it like the seventh or eighth inning? Yes, yeah. he put him in yeah. about the seventh inning. And he hit two inning. batters and yeah, the, the crazy. guy. Yep, yeah, because yeah. Holt got hit and, and Moreland got hit. Moreland got hit and then Bradley hit the grand slam. Yep. That's right. We walk a guy in, yeah. We didn't break down game five because that one to me still was the most shocking game out of the series. <laughs> really? I just you can't make this stuff up, Phil. You I, can't anymore. I, I think that was like that was like that was destiny kicking down the door and just punching you in the face, like this is happening and like ashing out on your face. David Price David took Price, the ball yeah. on three days rest. Yeah. After his eh, mediocre game two. You know, baby steps, if you yeah. say. Baby <laughs> steps he made. Well what do you have well, him in? He's no Kimbo longer a baby it? anymore. He's no. a big boy now. Sure. The Pampers are off. He's good to go. He's good to go. <laughs> He's pooping out good games left and right. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, well, would you have put him in if Kimbrell, you know. Yes. Yeah. You have to. Well, that's when Brandon was already at too. 35 pitches, right, Tom? Yeah. Who yeah. else are you going to go to? Wild Thing Kelly? He already pitched. Yeah. And uh, sales, sales stomach wasn't feeling too good. Yeah, yeah. he's got the belly button ring problems. <laughs> yeah. No, but the game Which five. is a joke. I want to just yeah. set the air here, folks. He doesn't have a belly button ring. I don't know where it came from. I don't know why it even came to this this stupidity thing. Because well, he's that... trying to get into the National League's head. He's yeah. Well, he's... What? I don't understand. Like, why does that matter to anybody? I because don't he said, I, no, he no, said that he was hospitalized it, it, yeah. with a rash from down below. Sure. So he said it with the straightest of faces. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. I don't. He's know just why a dry guy. He's just uh. a dry, dry dude. But uh. So game five, yeah, like that. I'm like, it has to be. It has to be Price. Well, game he five, it, it was the most, in, it, like Nick said, it was the most insane game because yeah. then Kimbrel comes in in the ninth and has like one of his best innings of the entire <laughs> playoffs. You're like, what is going on? Our friend Eric Gagne. Eric Gagne is his, very close friends with Alex Cora. Is so, he a pitching? Is he a bullpen coach? I don't know what he is. He's just hanging out. I think he's a BFF. <laughs> yeah. What's funny about it is yeah, Eric Gagne is a do too. was yeah. a Dodger. Yeah. He was one of their greatest closers they had. Gagne came to Boston in 07 and just stunk it up. He just had, He had one good inning against Cleveland. One good inning, <laughs> and that was it. He did. I do so remember. So for whatever it. reason, <laughs> Gagne ring. was watching the game from game four and noticed <clears throat> that Kimbrell was tipping his pitches. Mechanics were off. Oh. 
He texted Cora and said, can I have a conversation with Kimbrell to fix some things up to over. make it better? Well, you know what, Eric Gagne? You just earned your first Red Sox save of your career, so congratulations. <laughs> it only took till 2018, but, I mean, no time better than the present, my friend. Yeah, good things come to those who wait or retire. I do want to read a Facebook post that I posted during the Ga David Price start. Oh, no. What are we... It's clean, don't worry. No, I don't care about the cleaning, but what did you, what eruption? I had an in-game analysis of him yeah. in game five, and I texted this to Tom, and I think that you agreed from the statement. And I'm, I'm surprised more people, you know, the experts, so to say, didn't mention this, because it's, I think it's very important. And it's something that you might say, you know what, Nick, maybe you are a genius, maybe you are right. But this Man. took it from me thinking about where he was throwing, how he was doing to set the stage. So here it goes. Many fans so far are surprised how well David Price is throwing. I go, I'm not. You can see clear-cut command of all pitches tonight with a sensational changeup with movement. Remember that David Price had bad movement and bad command of, of his pitching for the postseason against uh, New York and so far at home against the Astros as well. Basically, what I'm saying there is he couldn't control his pitches, didn't know where they were going. Why is that? Indoor? Is that what we're talking about? It has to do with the weather. Oh. Okay, it's been chilly in Boston and in New York so far in the postseason. Okay, there's, you get less feel of your pitches when you're outside in a cold element, specifically when you have carpal tunnel. And that's what David Price has suffered from from Fortnite. Not really, it's just what he has. Mm -hmm. So tonight, being in a warm climate and indoors at Minute Maid Park, to me, made a world of difference. Because when you're indoors, you have more feel of your pitches, you're in a controlled environment, the weather's not going to dip down to 40, 30, it's going to stay, you know, 68, 70 degrees inside of there. And you know what? Price was able to feel the ball and know where things were going to be located and, and executed from. I don't know if it's just... It is what it is on what he did. I don't know if it's something that should be discussed on stuff, but I think if that game were at Fenway Park, I think it would have been a different outcome, at least on my eyes. What do you think? That's, and you don't have to say I'm right, wrong. It's just a theory that I had. No, I that's, he that's doesn't have to. That's you, don't have you don't have to. You don't have to. Don't have to. This is face to fact. That's just yeah. a fact from me. Could be different from you. I mean, I... That's exactly what I was thinking when I when I was watching the first game he pitched in that series, and the difference that he had pitching in Houston, mm -hmm. and how like different his pitches were, and how more spot on they were. Where um, Vasquez or Leon. Whenever you see Price, it. specifically in cold weather, and he and he's blowing on his hand. It means that he has no feel of his pitches. And that's kind of what happened from game two. If you remember, he kept blowing from his hand. He kept going like this, trying to warm it up. There's something that's psychologically maybe or physically wrong inside his hand from stuff that they have to probably figure out in the offseason on what to do to keep his hand, you know, warm or whatever so he can feel the baseball better. What are your thoughts? No, I, I had not thought about it in be, uh, being indoors, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I also think he got a couple of call, I mean, he had a good strike zone. Mm -hmm. Like, he, uh, they called it pretty well. Mm -hmm. And they had, like, for his inside stuff, uh, they allowed him to pitch inside. Because mm -hmm. they gave him, they, I'm not saying it was wider, but they gave him, like, the frame they had for him was pretty good. And Vasquez, is Vasquez who caught him? Vasquez caught him, yeah. yes. And he did a great job yeah. framing. And, uh, I mean, I, all credit to David Price. He pitched... An incredible game. I, I it, totally agree. It, it was, a, it innings, was right? an interesting officiating crew, too. Uh, mm. I mean, I... Honestly, in, on my eyes, I mean, I, I know some of the things went the Red Sox way on it, but just as a, as a normal fan watching the game, I think you have to be very, very satisfied on how that baseball crew did it in the Astros series. I mean, some of the calls that were made were 100% correct. Yeah, I mean, I think they kind of went... Like... Versus what's-his-face, Angel Hernandez, again, yeah. the Yankee series can't make a freaking call to save his life. Well, and he also, like, he was back and forth with calls against uh, the Yanks and the Sox. They both were weird. They're, they, I guess, you know, they're not consistent, but I guess that's what they're trying to do with replay as well. It's so weird. Like, 
like 18, 20 minutes of the thing. Yeah, and you, you know, let's just extend the game even more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, this, this like call's not be long tough. enough. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't need to get to bed. Until do you? 30. What do you guys feel about that? Are the games starting too late? Is that the problem? We were or talking is, about this, yeah. Or is the problem pace of play? Uh, hmm. I mean, look at the time. Uh, I mean, it all depends on the call. Nice, it it but, depends. Yeah. All depends on the call that they're making. Um, playoff games is tough because if you're playing a team out west, you need to start it late enough for them to be still be able to watch yep. it after work, but early enough for us to be able to watch it so we don't have to stay up so late. Right. Um, but yeah, again, it, it really it kind of depends on the call that they're making because I mean that Mookie Betts play it that took at least 10 minutes to mm -hmm. figure out which yep. because they were trying to figure out if it had gone over the wall in the mm -hmm. first place too right. which so. is weird i mean didn't hit anything except for the glove and a, a hand so is an 809 start for the east coast too late for a world series playoff is that style tonight game? i thought it was That's... seven i thought 7 30. no nope. 809. 809 oh so 7 30 is like the pre-game pre -game. Yeah. i all... was kind of hoping it was 7 30 because at least you have a half an hour it, i think it really depends on what the the team that the teams that are playing I mean, we know by the reason they're doing it. West it's, Coast, it's, yeah. it's, it's No, it has oh, to do with ratings. Oh, sure, They want sure. more of the prime time to get yeah. better, you know, money and marketing and all that jazz. Oh, but you'll be in the jazz. prime time for plenty of time. I, I, I <laughs> agree. Like well, they Even said four, that game four, five. the one that went to 1.30, its peak audience was at, I believe, 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And after that That's point, drop -off. dip, 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 dip. So was... all the people that were watching at least the bulk of the audience, went really never time. went to bed because they have to. In the fourth inning. I don't blame yeah. people. I mean, I'm no, just I, nuts and I stay up and watch. That's just who I am. For a casual viewer, it, a you're casual like, I'm not going to do this. Viewer, I'm not stay here. You know, a, a mother, a father, a kid that's got to go to school cannot stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning. the unemployed. The unemployed who don't care about it. Like, they listen, can't. I would like to watch this, so but they, it's way uh, too long. Many people, <laughs> probably millions of people, missed... The most unbelievable catch in Red Sox history. If you're a Red Sox fan, yeah, no, it's it, it's unfortunate. It is for a kid not to be like, oh, did you see that last night? Yeah. Like, and I kind of remember a bit of that, but I also remember couldn't. I I mean, I wasn't allowed to stay up for like Monday Night Football and stuff like that because yeah. it was up late, and my parents were strict against ABC. But that's yeah. a whole other bag of bones. Yeah. They Howard Cosell do you? They, yeah, they, like he's a demon and don't <laughs> listen to him. Uh, no, would... he actually is one of my favorite. He's how it is. Yeah, yeah. well, it just has like a, a sarcastic, yeah. like smart Alec and yeah. uh, him and just him and Muhammad Ali being buds, mm -hmm. like a casual, like professional buddies. Mm -hmm. I think is really great. But no, yeah, I mean, what do you do? I mean, you gotta attack the game a little bit as far as like, but how do you do it? There's so many things. Call more strikes. If it's, if it's <laughs> close, honestly, if it's close, call it a strike. I honestly don't think it really has to do with the game itself. Oh yeah. I think the problem is the networks. I mean, I, I think the I networks think part have too it. much control over saying what they're going to do with stuff. I mean, look at football with stuff. Yeah. CBS or NBC or all these other networks that call the stuff. But that's only where they put it in, like, commercial. I'm like, they can only do, like, commercial breaks in between, like, pitching change right. and inning change. Right, so that's I mean. there. But they still have control over when things are going to get scheduled, which just blows my mind. Well, I, yeah. I almost think that... It's you know, the professional organization that's being placed, MLB, NFL, whatever it is. Well, no, because they send, well. They should have the rights on saying, listen, this is what we're going to do. You can't tell us otherwise. I, it doesn't, it seems like there's a power struggle up the top well, with no, trying to figure out they sell when them to the place a game the right they way. They sell them the rights to, to air it. And right. It's like it's on their network, so they're, it's like it's They make purview. the call. Yeah. Yeah. They make the call. But I'm sure I'm sure they have conversations, and maybe they'll have conversations going forward. I, and I would, take I would like, think so. But, yeah, no, I don't know, man. I, I think it's a combination. I think there's a lot of stuff in the game. Like, uh, calling more strikes. I mean, I get maybe, like, at the union, at the umps union, I don't know. Like, how there's, do you determine well, there are, that? I mean, you? there are a lot of calls that could be called strikes. And, yes, it's... It's great when your team doesn't get that strike called on you, but yeah. in the next inning, the other team does, and you're like, well, I, I don't know how many times I've sat there and watched the Red Sox game and been like, you just called the strike on, yeah. you know, Bogarts on that, and then you don't give it Consistency to... Consistency is so important. Would you, would you rather it be, and this is honest, I'm not trying to be a smartass, would you rather have some sort of laser uh, or some sensor program? To determine balls and strikes, I think we're going to be getting to and that stage in about ten years. I think, think that's too cold. I think at some point you'll also see robots 
as the umpires on these games. Yeah, going to sure. take out the human element of the game. I still think you need some human contact. I think it. I don't know if it would be better with a like a laser or what something some to sort of sense sensor, the yeah. yeah. It's going to be a sensor be... inside the bases. That's what I'm hearing. That the really? base is going to have some sort of a sensor like that's it, there like that the... says out, safe, and it's going to get dictated back to whoever is the field officiating umpire uh-huh. that says that's the call. There's going to be no more arguments, replays, any of that stuff. That's what I'm hearing for baseball. Might... How would that work? Boy, I, you, you, maybe they step on the it? base and I don't know. Oh, as far as like you step because in the because if box? someone steps, if the, it could be the runner that steps on the base and it's like, oh, he's out, like. Oh, you mean, well, but I don't, I think there could be a be, sensor that's right in the front of the base is what I'm hearing. That's going to initiate. Would you put something in the ball too? There, there probably will be. Would that alter the, the weight or any? See, these are all the little weird thing, logistical things. We could talk about this for hours. It, it's going to be. It could. It'll be kind of a like weird. Like 25, 30 years ball. from now to see what things will be happening. You'll have cars if flying in the sky. I don't think cars You'll have lasers, in the sky. <laughs> lasers no, and baseballs. Not. That'd be murderers. <laughs> like, people would just be plummeting. <laughs> like, your car, my car. Oh, you run, you run out of gas. Well, <laughs> you'll, you'll have self driving cars. Sure, but at least you won't have to. You won't be like how many feet up in the air if something goes wrong. You won't fall to your death, yeah. or over someone just. It'll be like along. the Jetsons, which was. I mean, if I remember, that was a violent show. Yeah. yeah. My, Poor Elroy. Elroy, Elroy yeah. <laughs> but, anyways, no. speaking of our World Series, we have not previewed Game One. We need to do that. We're going to change the gears right now. So Game One opens up Fenway Park. You have a. Really good pitching matchup. That's going to be Chris Sale versus Clayton Kershaw, two of the best of the best in baseball. I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah. I'm real excited about that. Now, looking at the Dodgers, we need to prepare you a little bit to know who are some of the key players that are a part of that team. When you're on a Western part or a Western uh, baseball team in, the, in that division, you don't get a chance to really watch too much of those teams out there. So there are names that we need to make sure that we're careful of when you're facing off against them. Because oh. there's only a few handful of players on the Red Sox roster who have even really faced any Dodgers. Oh, you mean just pitching-wise? Pitching-wise or even I match think. up against oh, yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. So one of the names, of course, Clayton Kershaw. That's the big, you know, that's their Everybody ace pitcher. Knows him. Kershaw is one of the best pitchers in baseball. Absolutely top five. Um, I'd throw Chris Sale in the top five as well. I mean, this is a, this is like a Chris Sale, Justin Verlander style matchup. Yeah, three Cy Youngs yeah. and been in the playoffs. For, I actually give yeah. the edge to Verlander because he's had more success in the playoffs than Kershaw. Yeah. So and he's got a ring. Maybe you drop down a little bit of a little bit of a level. Kershaw's been, you know, used quite a bit from the Dodgers, hmm. so maybe his sharpness isn't going to be there. Might be tired. We'll see. Uh, my biggest name uh, on the Dodgers to watch for is Justin Turner. Okay, here's a guy that plays third base for them. He's very similar to Alex Bregman. Um, I don't think he's as good as Bregman. You know, the Red Sox really controlled him well. He's kind of like their spark plug. He's their fire. Um, so there's somebody that you need to be, you know, on high alert from. We all know the Manny Machado story. On the last show, we talked about how disgusting and rotten he is as yeah, an individual. Him, yeah. He's one of the reasons yeah. why Pedroia is still out from his knee yeah. after taking him out at second base. Um, the Red Sox have a long history with him. Suspended long, long years. history with him. Um, they're not going to let Manny Machado beat them. I'm sorry. They're just not. They're going to take him out of the game. Which they're really selling like promotionally. Like, Fox is really selling it as, like, Manny Machado and the Dodgers. And yep. it's like, he's been with the team, like, three months. Exactly. And it's like, all right. Exactly. What I'm nervous about about that is Mookie playing second base when it comes to... Well, there's to a LA. great discussion right yeah. there. Uh, is Mookie Betts... Would you put Mookie Betts at second base when we go to Los Angeles? I would, game three, four, you're going to have to play at their park. The DH is not going to be there, folks. So you have to take one of the players out of the lineup Who's it going to be? You don't. You why'd put you, Mookie at second and put J.D. in the outfield. Why'd you you got to bench J.D. JD Martinez? No, why don't you put J.D. at first? They don't want to do that. He's never played the position before. That's why. <sighs> David Ortiz. That's I all wouldn't, I got to say. No, that's all I, I got to say. I wouldn't disagree with you. That's all but I have to say. But J.D.'s never played first. They yeah. don't feel comfortable but doing that. I would rather see Moreland or Pierce at first anyway. Yeah. Defensively. Yeah. I, I no, would. I well, no, not even defensively. Oh, offensively, to too. Just to have the bat at the no, plate. No, true. Moreland has been, yeah. Mookie but, came up as a second baseman. He's played good. second right, base, yeah. you know, a, a good part of his playing yeah. career. Not as a, you know, major leaguer, but 
he's been a second baseman from before. On my eyes, on my end, I feel completely comfortable putting him there. I think that's the most logical play. Three games. You take Holt or Kinsler out. That means you keep your outfield intact. Dodger Stadium has some deep alleys out there, and I don't think they feel comfortable taking Bradley out of the lineup. Mm -hmm. I don't really think he can either after he just won. I know batting 200, but mm -hmm. he still did a nice job. He got three of the biggest the hits in the series. MVP. Yeah. He I, got three of the biggest hits in the series. How so can I you think not? you have to put. I think you have to put. Brad, leave Bradley in center. You leave Ben and to left. You put JD to right. It is what it. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, you, uh, Ben Attendi left. Uh, no, Bradley Ben Attendi would be in center. Bradley would be in right, and oh. JD would be in left. Is right. right deeper than center? You got to figure out that. I'm I think, sure they have the scouting report. I don't know the board. logistics. I on think LA. the I smaller the part. Park, yeah. I think the smaller think is is, is left game. field. So yeah. you might see a shift between Ben and and Bradley going left. I know or right. JD play, uh, feels more comfortable in left field. I know he does too. So. Yeah. You gotta keep Martinez played, in the uh, lineup. Yeah, that's what he played yeah. at, uh, with the. Um, Your other uh, question that you have to answer is: We have a couple lefties. There's actually three left-handed starters for the Dodgers. Do you play Devers at third base, or do you play Nunez or Holt? What do you do? Um, I, that is a tough. That's I would. A tough question, I would. Probably, that question is going to come up tonight too. I would probably put Holt in. At third? Give, yeah, put okay. Holton at third, given how well he hit the ball in the ALCS. What do you do, Phil? I mean, uh, I mean I'm mean, i leaning towards Devers, yeah. but then again, like Devers' glove. I mean, he's made some great plays, but he also had a horrendous play. Funny how we're Freeman. not mentioning Gimpy. I, I mean, um, Eduardo Nunez, no, excuse he, me. No, Nunez has been really good there, too, yes. but I think uh, Devers' bat has been uh, more I'm telling you, every time that ball is important. hit to Nunez when he's at third, I hold my breath. But he's I'm had like, some great plays. I think he's going to blow his knee out every time he's over there. He might. If he gets the ball hit he's right on a at his joint. <laughs> over there. <laughs> I know. I know. personally, I'm going to ride with the hot hand, yeah. and it is Devers. Yes, he's hotter. He's either hit or miss. But you know what? The bat that he showed in the championship series just now, you can't sit. You can't. Brock Holt's another. He got a huge home run in game five. But Holt's He's got been some the ball huge well hits, too. too. Yeah. But Holt's, Holt didn't really hit much at all in the Astros series. Or, or do you put Holt at short and Bogarts at third? No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> what is this, 2013? <laughs> you could. You could try it. You'd go back. I think you're going to see Devers. Yeah. I think that's what you're going to do. But you can also switch Holt, them out. In the later Cora innings. feels yeah. you got to thank Cora here. What would what would AC do? And he's going to go with the people that have got him to that point. He feels better with Holt as his pinch hitter. He just does. He feels more comfortable with Kinsler at second base. Just look at what he's seen. He feels comfortable with Devers, and then in the late innings, if he's got to put Holt at third or something, he'll do that. No, he's got um, that option, man. I think that's what you'll see. I'm not going to second-guess Alex Cora again. I keep repeating that because I like to second-guess things. But let's, <laughs> let's all think about how the Red Sox got to the situation they are. They're not here in the World Series without Alex Cora. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, let's let's well, believe in what we see then. Cora's looking like a genius right now, keeping Blake Swihart for the playoff lineup. He hasn't playoff played. Roster. Oh, he, he played in like the blowout, the 16-1 to yeah. against the Yankees. But, but. You, that's, you're, that's an extra bet now for the National League. Did you both hear about the big roster decision today? Yeah. You didn't hear about this? No. Yeah, Drew Pomerantz is on the roster. And uh, He's throwing real good BP, apparently. He's got his basketball up to, ooh, he's got it up to ooh, 95, beep, folks. Batty practice. Watch it. Well, the reason they put him off, on. Yeah is because the Dodgers have a lot of left-handed hitters and Pomerantz has not given up a left-handed hitter home a left-handed hitting home run all season. There it is. Woohoo! <laughs> the jinx. <laughs> As Jared Carabas says, Il Pomerantz is in the is in the uh, <laughs> is on the roster. That means Brandon Workman is off. The only active oh, World Series um, pitcher that only threw two player innings. from 2013 <laughs> is no. Xander Bogarts. He's the only active player on the current roster for the World oh, wow. Series who played. Has Workman um, here been here that long? Workman's mm -hmm. been here for a wow. while. But remember, he had, he had Tommy John. That's right. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. Um, and then the other move, too, is Stephen Wright said he was healthy, looked like he was healthy. He's not on. He's not on the roster. Oh, yeah. I was thinking, yeah, where did he go? I was hoping go? that he would, they would be there, but... Yeah. 
The last time that Stephen Wright played against the Dodgers, that's when uh, John Farrell pinch ran him and he blew out his knee and arm. If you remember that, so I do. maybe they're just making sure right that that playoffs, situation too. won't happen again. Well, it doesn't matter; so. he's not playing anyway. So, I mean, Who they? knows? Maybe Rick Porcello will pinch hit too. He could. Yeah. He could. Now, well, actually, he's a the, yeah, he's a pretty good hitter. He is a pretty good National, hitter. National Park. Yeah. yeah, that's my center fielder. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, for game two, it looks like David Price will be throwing. Are we comfortable with that after what he just did? I mean, you gotta be. You gotta be. That's you have no choice. Thought. Yeah. He's your second in command. Game three, uh, Cora hasn't made the official announcement yet. He's between Abaldi and Porcillo. It's all determined on if they're needed in game uh, one or two in the bullpen. It's 2-3-2 two, two, or is it 2-2-1-1? Two, it two, goes 2-3-2. Two, 2-3-2. Three, two. Two, right. three, two. Um, a reminder on the series. So you have Tuesday night, open up game one. That's at Fenway Park. That's an 8-0-9 start. Wednesday, game two. That's at 8-0-9 as well. That's David Price versus... Um, um, Hugh, H-U-H, H-Y-U, something I like think that. So, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Jun, whatever, yeah. Y- yeah, the Japanese pitcher yeah, for really that. I'm sorry, I don't know his, I'm sorry, I don't you know his name. You should be. I should. Thank I'm you. sorry, I didn't do my No, he's really good, I like um, him. Game three will be Friday night at Dodger Stadium. That's at 8.09 as well. Or oh. 8.15, I think it's 8.15 actually Friday night. Give those Dodgers fans the then extra Then you also have time. Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Excuse me, it's 8.09 Friday night, it's 8.09 Saturday night, it's 8.15 if necessary game five because they got to get football done on Fox, that's why. Oh, weird. Yeah. If necessary, the series would go game six, that would be Tuesday on October 30th, back to Fenway Park. If necessary, game seven on Haunted Halloween night. I'll be in Boston on that night. Uh, That'll be quite a psycho. Yeah, Mm. quite a uh, interesting Mm. scene. A trick or treat? (laughs) Let's hope it's a treat. Uh, And as we talk about treat, let's hope it's not needed. We need to (laughs) need to decide. That's true. Let's hope it isn't. We need to determine here who we think is going to win, how many games it's going to take, and the uh, picking the candy out of the bag here. Who the MVP of the series is going to be? Well, I think we're all in agreement of who's going to win. I don't know. Maybe I'm like Nomar Gashiapara, who calls into WEI today and says, oh, Dodgers in six. Oh. Way to go, Nomar. Rip oh. that five Life, off my back Lifelong now. Red yeah. Sox player here. Yeah. Did he play? I'm going to take your damn World Dodgers Series play, ring yeah. back from 04 because you didn't deserve it. Okay, back to you. Oh, did he? Yo, well, nah, he, he, did. There, like, he did. He got I'm traded just, at the I'm deadline. Just, I know. He got traded at the deadline. They got he Cabrera has to pick and... the Dodgers because he works for them. Oh, he works for yes. them? Yes. Oh, all right, then. If and he then. said the Red Sox, he gets fired. No. I understand But that. he, all right. Uh, yeah, I think. Well, who do you go Tom, with? Tom, you want to go Tom? Tom, who do you go with? I go with the Red Sox. Oh, surprise. Shocker, right? And I go. I say I say four or five. I say four or five. I say they either sweep or L.A. takes a game in L.A. Uh, MVP. Uh, this is a tough one. This is, this is the toughest answer to the question. Um, it's not tough for me. If you were going to say uh, at the beginning of the year, oh, Bre- and Jackie Bradley Jr. is going to be your AL. And David CS Price gets MVP. your uh, Deciding game, game to get five, to the yeah. World Series. Like, oh, okay. Pitch a brilliant game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not out of my mind. No, yeah. I, I'm totally fine. Uh, what do you think? What do you I'm going to have to go with Brock Holt, the Brock star. Whoa. Oh, wow. that is, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. That's why that you wanted either. to play third. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's so why. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Know. Who do you go with? Uh, well, I mean, I'd like to think I actually, this series is going to be tough. And I actually have a, a bunch of buddies back in L.A. who are Dodger fans, like true Dodger fans. And I think it could go seven. And, I, and my MVP would be Chris Sale with two games under his belt mm-hmm. and closing it in Boston. I think that would be Sale. So he's the MVP the, that you would give Chris Sale? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, okay. uh, that's one scenario. I can also okay. see like... Come Sale away by Sticks playing yeah, in the background. Just as he, like, <laughs> the last turner is... No. Uh, no, I could, see, I could see Sale realistically. I could see a pitcher getting it in mm-hmm. this series for either team. Yeah. And I can also see, like, maybe, like, a J.D. Martinez picking up something. Because, I don't know, there are too many. It is it is a tough – it really is a tough There's a lot of production that. from everybody. It all which depends makes it on difficult. how long it goes, too. Yes. Yeah. And there's a different hero every night, yeah. I am going to go with six games. 
I am going to go with um, the Red Sox, of course. I feel J.D. Martinez is going to get your um, World Series MVP. I am also going to come out on a limb here and say that Chris Sale will look dominant and he'll be a shutdown person, but he's not going to be your best starter. I think your best starter here is going to be Avaldi again. Ah, there we go. <laughs> I, I, I think Price? you and I think Avaldi well, yeah. <laughs> is going to have a great game three. No, I thought I was thinking Avaldi too. Six, but David Price. Though. They're going to he's going to they're going to use him again to come out of the bullpen and help, and that's going to help everything. Yeah, I mean it's all there. throw it all against the wall, man. That's the um, kind of awesome thing about these playoffs. There will be some memorable play that happens in this series for the Red Sox. I don't know what it's going to what game it's going to be, but oh, all right. There are way too many signs that I can feel and I can see right now that say that the Red Sox are going to get this World Series. Luck has been on their side throughout the whole thing. Momentum, Red Sox, it's on their side. You've seen so, too many different things happen so far. JD, I mean, not JD, uh, David Price getting his first playoff win uh, you know, as a starter. That's... Huge. Oh, that was huge. J huge. Jackie Bradley Jr. getting an MVP in a series. I mean. Biggest shock to this guy. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up anymore. You just can't. Yeah, you're number two in the There are club. Too, yeah. many, too many <laughs> signs <laughs> for me to say that the Red Sox aren't going to do this. To, I actually said this off air. I actually wouldn't be surprised if this is wrapped up in four either. I'm going safe with, a, again, my conservative pick. When I did that before, it took five games. Could that happen again? It could. Um, but I just, I feel this World Series, I have more confidence in getting a World Series win than 04, 07, and 13 combined. Oh, uh, I can see 07. I can kind of see 04. I was more confident because I thought like we slayed the biggest beast. This feels a lot but, like 04 to me right really? now. Really? Mm -hmm. It feels a lot like 04. But it and feels better. It feels better. Because I feel like th there's just there's so many signs that just say this is the year. Well, in 04, in 04 they went down three nothing, and you're like, okay, yeah. like how can you have confidence going into you know going into game four of that series and saying, okay, oh yeah, the Red Sox are gonna win the World Series, they're yeah. gonna come back. It's they a good, gonna, bet, good bet to put money on. Though, it would have it. been. It would have <laughs> been. I mean, even for them to win the World Series in the first place yeah. at the beginning of the season. Are there any players that are on the roster right now that we feel? not comfortable with that might have a struggle in this series in the field or at the plate could be in a lot of different things i don't feel comfortable with kinsler at the plate okay i don't feel comfortable with devers in the field okay never have <laughs> i don't are know we, are I we all will. in the agreement that we feel better about the bullpen right now are we concerned with them at all concerned with kimbrell okay i don't see much concern well, eric with... gagne is on speed dial so I don't see I don't see much concern with the rest of the relievers. I think I, I think right now the way Barnes is pitch throwing the ball, I think he needs to be used more instead of one just one batter in the eighth to end the eighth inning. I have the most confidence in the bullpen right now with Ryan Brazier. Yeah, no, he's been he's the he's biggest better, surprise. And he's was, better than Barnes. What was the last? I think it was game five. It was either game five or four. Like oh, he hasn't allowed a, a run. Yeah, and then oh, he goes yeah, up the yeah, run. Like, yeah. Well, thank you, announcing team <laughs> yeah. of TBS. Yeah. One of the no, worst, been, one of the worst so com commentators. I'm so glad that I don't have to deal with TBS again. Yeah, she oh, gets Joe, Joe Buck in, in, hey. in them. Well, who, do we, but, who else in Joe Buck? Joe what? Buck, I think it's John Smoltz. Oh, I do like mm -hmm. Smoltz. And then you get David Ortiz, A-Rod, Frank Thomas for that post game. Oh, They're, awesome. Awesome. Well, They're awesome. They're yeah. awesome. I'm not a big fan of A-Rod, but... No. He isn't bad in, like, the booth. I don't mind A-Rod in the booth. I actually like... I don't like his voice. He's just in love with himself. nasally and... I'm a Rod. I'm amazing. He's just um, this weird like. Hopefully, Jackie Bradley gets another big like home run, and we get to see uh, Poppy's reaction yeah, yeah. live. I did look at that when <laughs> he told me. I'm like, oh yeah. Before we wrap up the show, I have a couple facts that I want to share with you because I think they're pretty cool. So, this World Series between the Dodgers and the Red Sox is the farthest distance between two World Series teams playing each other in baseball history, between Fenway Park and Boston. And then Dodger Stadium in L.A., it's almost 3,000 miles between the two. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's your first right. fact that's there. The other fact here is this is, um, this is the first World Series between two managers that were both a part of each other's organizations in baseball history. So, so Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts is the manager. Is the manager yeah, of the Dodgers. Yeah. He's got the legendary steel, of course. Yep. 
I might have an over and under on how many times Fox is talking about that steal with Dave Roberts. Might be like over 100. Yeah. Um, they'll, probably Alex Cora. they'll probably mention Alex it every Cora. game this series. <laughs> yeah. Alex Cora was a part of the Dodgers for a long, long time, oh, too. I didn't know that. He was a player for them. It, he went from the Dodgers right, to, to um, the Red Sox. All right. um, so I hate rooting against Dave Roberts. I mean, that guy can live on an infin infinity but here. All you got to think Sox about history. is Manny Machado. That's right. <laughs> That's right. He got. He has a lot. And Puig, those two are two of the most Puig's not hated. Bad. Oh, but Puig's, Puig's not that Puig's bad. Puig's a puke. He's not oh, that. Lord. He's not that bad. At least he doesn't go after players and yeah. try to blow their knees out. Oh, uh, just one ball off Manny's head would make me so happy. He might get beaned. I mean, there's, he a, should. there's, there's a good chance. He's gonna good. get thrown at. Good. He's definitely the gonna get thrown at. The fans are going to kill him. Not what real. Well, I mean, I mean what, I not, not like that. The, the boos are going to rain it? down on him at Fenway. Yeah. I mean, vocally, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the fans going nuts oh, for him. They I won't let him breathe. Wait. They yeah. will not let him. I mean, breathe. we know him. I mean, this team knows him. We know him. You know what a I mean? history he has yeah. with them too. So this should be an awesome World Series. We're all pumped here for it. We hope to be able to provide you with some more, you know, analysis and breakdown of of this series as it's uh, played out. Um, you think six games or seven games. Tom thinks it's about five. I'm um, yeah. five or six right in between there. Go Red Sox. Final words? Go Red Sox. Do what you can. <laughs> Which is win. Win, hopefully. Yes. hopefully win Red yeah. Sox, win. Um, for Nick Face, Tom Smith, and Phil Healy, go Red Sox. We will see you again, hopefully with another great Face the Facts episode breaking down this World Series. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.